Hi, my name is Terry Iverson from Iverson and Company and Champion Now. I'd like to talk to you a little bit as a parent about some of the things that I believe strongly in about the future of our young people in this country. About two years ago, I wrote, authored a book called Finding America's Greatest Champion. And what I'd like to point out to the parents that this video is intended to reach is the subtitle. The subtitle is Building Prosperity Through Manufacturing, Mentoring, and the Awesome Responsibility of Parenting. So that being said, I have a lot in the book that speaks to parents. And in this quest to try to educate young people in our country about manufacturing jobs, the biggest sector and the hardest re sector to reach is you, the parents. We can reach the students through schools and, and they can do all sorts of things online as far as researching careers. But the eventuality and, and the bottom line is, is we need to make sure that we reach out to the parents so that they in fact know what's fact, what's fi fiction and, it, and what's good for their child and what's good for their, their students, so to speak. So let me tell you a few things that are in the book uh, should you be uh, able to get a copy or read up uh, on the subject matter. I believe that the more of a foundation we give our children, the better prepared they are for life. This speaks to a lot of the mentoring that I speak of and that I believe so strongly in. I was mentored as a young person and I was very fortunate and it helped me get to the latter, the beginning of my career and, and all the way through my career. I ask the, the, all of you parents to do the hardest job and most important job of all, and that's to be a parent. And that should be your, your first and foremost role and, and try not to be your child's best friend. That's, that's something that's always difficult for all of us, but we all know that our child needs our guidance and needs structure and needs to be held accountable for both the positive and negative things that, that cross their path as they grow. Regardless of who, who you are or what vantage point you come from, I hope that by reading the book that you come away with a change that should be positive, not only for yourself, but for our country and for your individual student or your child. I think it's time for our culture to be aware and, and to be engaged as to where things are made, how things are made, and why it's important for us to care of, about any of this. Generally speaking, I think education in our country has failed many of our youth, not all of our youth, but many. And our math and science scores as a country are exceedingly low and that we need to understand what the market, what the industry, what the workforce needs going forward. I think you've probably heard the comment that there's jobs in five years out when, you're one of, when your children or your child was, is to graduate that don't even exist, that there's jobs that don't even exist today that are five years out. Uh, my dad growing up was a disciplinarian, so to speak, and he always encouraged me to make my own decisions, to, to research and understand all the facts and then make the decision and then stick by it and don't look back and own the decision, plus or minus, pro or con, good or bad. And so that's something I think is, is a takeaway that I uh, am very thankful for my, for my dad to teach me that. In about 2013, our local Congressman Brad Schneider asked me to go to Washington DC to speak to the Small Business Committee, House, House of Representatives Small Business Committee and speak with two other manufacturers on the difficulty for manufacturing companies, particularly small businesses, small manufacturing companies in this country to find skilled labor, to find skilled workers. And we, all three of us pretty much said the same message. And that is that we need more skilled workers and we need more people in our, in our factories, in our companies. Over the, the pandemic with COVID-19, I think one of the things that we've learned is that we've learned that we should not be so dependent on products and in, in COVID-19 uh, example, medical products and protective equipment products and and, and vaccines and, and et cetera. We shouldn't be so dependent on things made outside of our country. We should have more of, of critical components and critical 
products be made within within our our boundaries of our country. So one of the things during the pandem pandemic that I was fortunate to do is is to have over two dozen podcast interviews speaking about parenting, speaking about opportunities in manufacturing, speaking about all sorts of other facets, mentoring. And so on our Champion Now website, you'll find each and every one of these podcast interviews that maybe there's some resource or some information there for you to, to review. One of the future things that I hope to bring on, in the Champion Now uh, website, web portal, is a Roku channel for manufacturers to list their videos and, and their careers and the products that they make so that young people and parents alike can learn more about a company and, and what opportunities that they may have for themselves or, or, or for a student. On the other side of the coin, we're working with a, a partner where we can provide a portal, an educational student resume video portal where they can put their, they can put their resume, they can put their, their project work, they can put a video introducing themselves in, in, in an elevator speech, uh, so to speak, of who they are, what they believe, what they're passionate about, what their skill set is, what their passion is in life. And so this is what the future holds for the Champion Now site and, and what exists on the Champion Now site as well. You also find a audio sample of the book, Finding America's Greatest Champion there as well. One of the things that I, I feel is in order to be more competitive, we need skilled and educated people. This is a statement by Greg Wasson, former CEO of Walgreens uh, from the uh, introduction of, of the book. Um, I also feel that our culture has become blind to the importance of manufacturing in our country. If you look historically through the course of time, all the most prosperous countries in the, in, on the globe, in the world, have all had a good, solid, vibrant manufacturing base. The middle class is, is absolutely and positively uh, thriving when you have a, a healthy and, and prosperous manufacturing component. As a parent, one of the things that I would suggest is, is if you don't know about Manufacturing Day to take heed and take notice, the Manufacturing Day this year, 2021, is October 1st. It's generally the first Friday in October. In many states, October is becoming Manufacturing Month. This is the best opportunity for parents to learn more about the companies within their community, possibly where your, your student, your child, can learn more about manufacturing companies, the careers they offer, uh, and see the clean. Uh, environments, the, the challenging and, and exciting and exhilarating careers that manufacturing has to offer. Uh, manufacturing Day started about in 2012. Um, the FMA, Fabric, Fabricators and Manufacturers Association, uh, was responsible for founding Manufacturing Day. Uh, me and a few others were at a meeting at our facility at Iverson and Company with Champion Now. And basically they introduced the fact when we brought up we needed a day like this, that they in fact were voting on it the very next week or the very next month. And that was you know eight years ago at that point. So soon 2021, I think this is our seventh manufacturing day in this country. And I think this is the opportunity to learn about, does your local manufacturer offer internships? You should have your student, your child, ask about internships for the summer or internships during the school year. And if nothing else, if, if your local high school doesn't have a vibrant uh, internship program, manufacturing day at your local manufacturers, that is the time to ask them, do you, are you connected with a school that offers internships to the community? During the, during COVID, I reached out, or actually just prior to COVID, I reached out to a young man on the south side of Chicago by the name of Vondale Singleton. And the reason I bring up this relationship between Vondale and myself is that he is a 
program called CHAMPS. My 501c3 is called Champion Now, and that stands for Change How American Manufacturing is Perceived in Our Nation. You can laugh, it's the longest acronym that you've, I'm sure, ever heard. But he has a program called CHAMPS. And while I can't tell you the acronym and, and what it stands for, it's basically a mentoring program for young adult males, for primarily black uh, African-American males on the south side of Chicago. And I was so impressed with this program that I had to reach out to Vondale, introduce myself, bring to his attention you know, the similarities between the names of our organizations, but most importantly, how I felt how important I felt mentoring is to our young people and how as a community and as a culture and society, we need to do a better job at mentoring our young people and, and make them aware that many older experienced individuals in industry want to mentor young people and that they should be receptive to mentoring. I also think that there's a, a reverse element of mentoring that young people can offer experience in social media and in technology that many people in manufacturing may not have uh, those core competencies, which you know the younger generation does. Um, I, I tried to get involved in, in Vondale's program and he has a mentoring program on, on Saturdays that I was actively going to participate in. And I came down and spoke to his, his high school class and oddly enough, only two out of 20 knew anything about manufacturing careers, which is very common when I go to speak to a, a group of young people. And so literally less than a week after I was visiting his school and, and already scheduling to go in on a Saturday to help mentor his young people, we had March 13th, which in, in the Illinois area was lockdown, where everyone had stay at home orders. And even as a, uh, a critical manufacturing concern an essential business, uh, I ended up working from home for about eight, eight to 10 weeks coming into my office in the evenings after only the bare and essential people were on site. So one thing that I learned from Bondale is that he had a virtual he did a pivot so that his mentoring program actually had a virtual uh, introduction because of the pandemic. And so that made me think, I had also done a manufacturing camp down in Florida. And I, I called the manufacturing camp that I, that I put out there called CNC Rocks. CNC stands for Computer Numerical Controlled. And so I ended up sending down to Florida uh, a CNC lathe, like the one shown behind you. And if you can look over to my left shoulder to the right-hand side of the picture, you'll see the young people that were involved in my manufacturing camp uh, in Jacksonville, Florida. You can see the instructor, some of the administrators, myself, and some of the young people involved. I think that's probably half of the young people that actually ultimately uh, participated. So that being said, the cost of sending a machine you know, across the country, the cost of taking time off work and, and, and training the instructor and me being present, I thought that wasn't really a very sustainable model. So over the recent months, what I've done is I've started videotaping. I come in on the weekends and I start videotaping about the technology that I've been a part of for the 40 years in the industry that I've been in. So that being said, it's now grown to over 22 videos and over four hours of content. And this is something that if you go on the Champion Now site, there's a 19 minute video summary that shows just a glimpse of, of about manufacturing. And if nothing else, if you go to that 19 minute video, it'll give you a really good, very broad explanation of different aspects of manufacturing. Uh, talk about the, you know, the pay, you know, is very, uh, you know, when compared to other uh, industries, very robust with benefits, manufacturers are very eager uh, to, you know, send new employees to either night school or uh, what they call, er, you know, earn while you learn type of environment, uh, probably more so than any other, you know, workforce uh, out there. 
So CNC Rocks is something that I would encourage you to look at. I do offer this as a, as a subscription model to schools for $500. They can subscribe for the year and use it within their school. I also have a school district uh, component and even an industry component. If an industry member or a uh, manufacturing concern or company wants to subscribe for a year, they can do that as well. So one thing to realize is over the next decade, there's probably three and a half million manufacturing jobs that will be open and need to be filled. And probably upwards of two million will not be able to be filled because of the skills gap. Uh, I'd like to call it an opportunity gap because there's an opportunity there, tremendous opportunity, yet a lot of our young people don't, don't know about this. If you took manufacturing by itself and compared it to all the global economies around the world, just the manufacturing economy in the US would be the ninth largest economy in the world. So that should give you some indication as to the opportunity uh, that's out in the US for manufacturing jobs. Uh, every dollar that's spent in manufacturing, there's another $1.89 that's added to the economy. These are snippets that I list in the book that I, that I try to, in presentations, uh, present uh, as being part of the book itself. Uh, Mike Rowe, uh, I think, is awesome. Uh, I'm sure you've heard of Mike Rowe, or at least I hope you've heard of Mike Rowe. But if you have difficulty as a parent understanding how your, your son or your daughter is going to be able to afford college or how you're going to be able to or not be able to afford to send them to college. Student, the student debt crisis is, is a travesty in this country. Uh, there's way too many young people that are spending way too much money and going into too much debt that will follow them for decades uh, after graduation. And so I'm not a big advocate of, of the student debt uh, burden that many of our students, many of our, our sons and daughters carry. So Mike Rose says that we are lending money we don't have to kids who can't pay it back to train them for jobs that no longer exist. That's nuts. And there's some really good dialogue here that needs to be discussed. And that is many times a young person will pick a path, an educational path that'll be tens, certainly tens of thousands of dollars, but usually many times hundreds of thousands of dollars, only to find that when they graduate, they get in a very long line of applicants into a workforce that's saturated with really well, uh, hardworking, well-educated um, applicants for that single position. And so in, in the simple case of supply and demand, if our students just realized that if they had many opportunities and fewer applicants, that salaries would, would rise and salaries salaries and the money available for that particular job uh, would go up, not to mention they would have several companies to choose from. So the skills gap, Micro continues to say, is a reflection of what we value. And in order to close the gap, we need to change the way that we actually consider or, or view you know, work uh, in this country. And in Europe, I talk in the book a lot about that Europe holds skilled labor and, and, and people, craftsmen, and people that have the skill sets that we're talking about, technicians and, and plumbers and, and electricians and machinists, they hold them in very high regard. And so in our country, sometimes we get wrapped up as parents about worrying and, and being concerned and, and being uh, more concerned with where our, our son or our daughter are gonna go to college then is it the right fit for them? If your son or daughter is going to college and, and going down a path, that's great. And, and I'm not saying anything to, to you know, derail or deter that. But there's way too many that either can't afford to go to, to college. Uh, it's not for them. They learn differently. When I was a young person, I learned differently. I didn't learn the prototypical way. I, I needed to see things. I needed to work with my hands. In, in, and, and find the relevance of, of what I was learning and how it could be applied. So in the book on page 147, I have a financial model that talks 12 years out from our high school seniors after they graduate, 12 years you know, out, either four or five years for college, 
And then in, in you know, seven or eight years or six or seven years after that. And I compare that individual with upwards of 200 to $250,000 in educational costs to the individual that has a two-year degree, which a much lower educational cost, enters the workforce much sooner. And with very conservative uh, estimates and, and uh, very conservative assumptions, at the end of 12 years, the four or five year degree individual can be in this example, uh, when considering paying back the tuition, 120,000 cash negative. Whereas the two year degree individual or someone that went right into uh, the workforce and then maybe their, their employer paid for their education after hours or even during hours, that that individual is actually $90,000 cash positive. So I'm not saying this is, is this example, this financial example is everybody, but there's something there. There's something there to review and, and ask yourself what's possible and what's appropriate for my child. So that being said, the one thing that I'll say is, is you can reach me by going to our Champion Now site and you can go through to my email address, which is terry at championnow.org, or you can reach me at my, my company email, which is tiverson at iversonandco.com. And look at the podcast interviews, listen to those. Look at the CNC Rocks sample uh, summary, 19 minute sample summary. Uh, listen to the audio sample of Finding America's Greatest Champion. There's all sorts of information on the Champion Now site. Um, it's very possible that the Roku channel will soon be launched. It's very possible that the student resume um, portal may soon be uh, up and going as well. And, and if nothing else, go to YouTube and, and do a research. Go to the Manufacturing Institute. There's tremendous information, in including on Manufacturing Day, uh, on the Manufacturing Institute, on NAM, um, www nam.org, uh, National Association of Manufacturing. Unbelievable information there on salaries, on jobs, on, on our economy, manufacturing economy, economy in this country. So that being said, I hope I've said something that can help you and help your child and your students uh, path be prosperous and be more certain instead of all the unknowns and hopefully uh, what you've heard today, something uh, can change your young person's life. Thank you so much.